to wake up in the word my and pastor paul lead pastor of set free life church and i had a little glitch a two <laughs> seconds ago so i wanted to make sure i was still here so welcome to wake up in the word guys it is monday motivation and it's time to grab your coffee your notebook set your mind on what god is about to do if you're coming in on the replay hashtag replay and if you're coming in live type of one let us know that you are here we've got jens johnson um, and we're going to rock this week. All right. So we're going to start in prayer and then I'm going to let Jen share what's on her heart. And we're just going to get into this awesome dialogue that we were talking about earlier before the show. And I'm telling you guys, it's going to rock your world. So father, we just thank you this morning. Father, we thank you for what you've already done and what you're going to do in this atmosphere. And we ask Lord that you would have your way today. Father, today we lay down every weight and every pressure that may have accumulated over the weekend, that may have accumulated over last week, the great topics that we had um, about fatherhood, about breaking those curses, about speaking life, all of these things, God. I pray, Father, that as I was convicted, the, that everyone else was convicted to change in those certain areas of our life to be better, to continue to further the kingdom, to strengthen others. And so this week, God, we pray again that you would show up. This is not a I thing or a we thing. It's a God thing. And so, Father, we pray that you would have your way in this broadcast, have your way in our lives, heal us, perfect us, and keep us focused on you, on things that are heavenly, things that are eternal. And so, Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm telling you, I'm loving it. I'm seeing Diane. I'm seeing Minda. I'm seeing Sherry. I'm seeing Mark. And you know what's so awesome is when Pastor Paul and I jump on this, uh, Mark Latham is the one about 628, 629 that will say, good morning, greetings, you know, can't wait, you know, all this. And, and I love it. I love it that we're building a community. And I mean, just that we're coming together. Because let me tell you, we're living in a world where we God needs us. God needs us to help fight the battle. I mean, I can't put it any other way because, you know, what we do is Pastor Paul and I, we get on in the morning and we say, you know, what's weighing on your heart? What's weighing on? And, and I, we, it's, it's amazing how what's weighing on our heart um, both of them is really pretty similar. And we had such great feedback about the show on Friday. You know, people were just talking about, you know, I need, I need to know that I'm a daughter of God. I need to know that I'm a child of God. I need to know my the responsibilities of a father. I need to, I need to focus on the eternal things because here's, here's what I know. If we focus on just this life, we're going to be depressed. We're going to be upset. We're going to be anxious. We're going to have that anxiety. We're going to feel self. We're going to feel low self worth because if we're just focused on this life and what we don't have, Satan wins. Because if Satan can say, you know what, you don't have that job that you want. You don't have that man that you want. You don't have that woman that you want. You don't have that house that you want. You know, focusing on all the things that you don't have are focusing on just the here and now. How you deserve and, and get you in a place where you're self-serving instead of others serving. Get you in a place where you're seeking the riches of the world instead of the riches of heaven. What happens is that's not that's not where happiness comes from. Right. And you're going to always be disappointed. You're going to always be left with a void. You're going to always be be wondering here and there, you know, just you're, you're going to be confused because that's Satan's plan. Satan's plan is be selfish, focus on what you don't have, focus on what you want. Um, don't don't think about others. That's Satan's plan. You might have a little bit of happiness. But you're never going to have that real peace 
-hmm. You're never going to have that real happiness. And I was telling Pastor Paul, I said, you know, a couple things. One story <laughs> was I was going through my Facebook last night before I went to bed and a friend of mine, an acquaintance, shared a story about how on Saturday night she wanted to take her life and she was at a party and she was at the top of a, a, a building and she looked over and she had been drinking some alcohol, uh, had been drinking a little bit too much. And she said, I wanted to just jump off because she was depressed that she didn't have the man in her life that she wants that all the men in her life that she's been with, they've not been the right person. And she was thinking about how she didn't have a relationship and she didn't have that, that family, immediate family that was a spouse and, and children. And, and she didn't feel worthy because, you know, that that's the thing we all know Satan's greatest, greatest um, accomplishment is when he can steal your identity. When he can steal your identity, when you think you have no worth, when you're really a, 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 a child of the most high, when you think you're nothing, well, Satan wins. I mean, when, when he can confuse you, Satan wins. So he's always going to be after our identity. And, and she said, instead of jumping, and she said, literally, when she looked over, there was a big a big like platform that she thought if I jump, I'm only going to go so far and I'm probably not going to kill myself. So she decided not to do that. And she went into a corner and just started to bawl her eyes out. And some woman, some angel that God placed on her heart came over to talk to her and said, do you believe in God? And she said, yes, I do. And he, she said, well, he sent me. He sent me over here to you. And she said, here was this complete stranger talking to me, loving on me, telling me how amazing I was, how God loves me so much that he, that nothing is going to go to waste that he knows that none of the, the, the guys that, that she's been going out with were right because she picked him, not God. <laughs> she picked him. And, and he doesn't want those people for her. He wants someone so much better for her. And she said, here's this stranger and said, I want your phone number. We're going to go to lunch tomorrow. He prayed over her. And then she said, when she went to her car, there was a note on her card that said, God loves you. God loves you. There was a note on this, her card. Now, did the, the woman that, that God sent her, was that the one that wrote the note? Or was it somebody else that God sent? Wow. But the whole, the whole message being that if we're just focused on now, on this earthly life, we are going to be sad and depressed in the void. And, and, and then pastor Paul, let's talk about what was on, what was on your heart, man. We can go on and on with what you were just talking about, because that is something that really needs to be addressed. Just like last week about the fatherless generation and, and the weeks prior of breaking generational curses and, and all of these things. The one thing that's dropping in my spirit is um, Smokey Robinson uh, sang that song "Tears from a Clown," right? Mm -hmm. And 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 usually this is this is where we, as the body and as human beings and as people, as friends, as colleagues, as 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 ministers, as coaches, as as spouses, we need to understand is this is that. The person that is usually the life of the party is usually the person that's hurting the most. And so even though we as people are are, you know, staying positive, some of the most positive people on the face of the earth are really battling something on the inside. And so never feel that you're lower than anyone else to really, truly ask them, 
how they are doing, what what is going on with them. Build that relationship, build that dialogue, because to add to your story, one of my mentors, this was years ago, was driving home. It was late one night and it was almost, I think, like two in the morning or something. So he's driving home. He's a pastor now and he's married and everything. But back then he was just getting started with the ministry and he was on his way home and he felt the Lord nudge him to go to McDonald's. And this guy doesn't even like McDonald's. He's like, OK, I don't, I don't know why I'm going, but do you want me to go? So he went. He got there. McDonald's was closed. All the lights were out. Everything was done. So he's like, all right, Lord, I showed up to McDonald's. I've done my part. The Lord said, no, go to the door. And so he went to the door, looked in, didn't see nobody. Because sometimes it's awkward as people to to hear this thing and then be like, oh, <laughs> OK, here I go. And so he knocks on the door. The girl comes out, you know, comes to the door and says, we're closed. And 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 so he was like, I have to tell you something. And so she was a little bit afraid, and a little bit hesitant to do so. But she finally opened the door. And he didn't, and God didn't even give him the words to say. All he said was, Jesus loves you. That's all he could muster up and just say. And this girl broke down crying. She had just loaded a gun and was about to take her life. And she was raised in the church. She was raised around good people. And I was having this conversation with another friend of mine yesterday. I'm like, you know, we as Christians have to understand that that our minds can't be just set on church because we are the church. We have to not just have the check boxes saying that I go to church. I do good. No. Why do you go to church? There's more people that are coming to the building. There's people that are in your life that are hurting. And so we have to be able to have that dialogue with God. But back to the point of the whole suicide thing is that this, this young girl was about to take her life and she was churched. She had been in church as a child. She fell away and she was ready to just give her life, just take her life. And she asked God for an answer and didn't get an answer. And she was about to blow her brains out. God will send the answer. And this is my question for those that are watching today. Who is fighting for me? I want you to type that in the chat stream. Who is fighting for me? And I want you to ponder on that because if you're fighting out of your own strength, you're not going to make it. When we hand it over to Christ, when we hand it over to God and we say, God, I need you to fight for me. I need you to take this circumstance. I need you to take this situation. I'm offended in this area. I'm hurt in this area. I'm wounded in this area. Instead of trying to put a Band-Aid on it, God doesn't want to put a Band-Aid on your issue. God wants to heal you. God wants to tell you it's all good. I'm fighting for you. Exodus chapter 14, verse 14. And this is so awesome because... <laughs> This is not even where we wanted to go, but we both had everything in our spirit that lead, that, that's leading us here. So Exodus chapter 14, verse 14 said, says, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. It's his word. It's his word for us today, for me today, for you today, Jens, for that one person that is listening right now and that's watching saying, where's God? Because we all have those seasons it's like, God, I can't feel you. God, I don't see you in the circumstance. I, I, I know that, that, that you're here, but I don't see you. We've all been through those seasons, but it's not a season for us to fight on our own. It's the season for us to rely on him, to focus on things that are above, focus on those things that are eternal because we are living in a hurting world and the suicide rates, especially this time, this era, this generation are at an all time high because people cannot, they can't deal with stuff, gents. They don't know how to deal with stuff. And that's why it's imperative that people would look deeper inside a person. If you need that pastor, I'm here. If you need uh, that encouragement, if you have a, a prayer request, you can email us. You can email me at the church. I'm sure Jens is going to 
uh, share her email. That's what we're doing this for is because we're here to help. We're not here just to say, hey, we're on a camera. Look at us. No, this is a calling, a divine appointment because God wants to fight for you. And that's where we have to go in this moment in time to understand that there's no season wasted. There's no season wasted. And there's no problem too big, or I want you to understand this too, there's no problem too small to give to God. And that's where, like Jen says, the self-worth comes in. Sometimes we don't feel worthy enough because we don't want to bother God with our smallest details, but our smallest details begin to compound into this huge thing that makes someone want to jump off the ledge. And so I know you got some more stuff to say, but I'm telling you guys, reach out to us. We're here to help. Reach out, even if it's for a quick prayer, even if it's for a quick word. But Jen's take it away. Yeah, you know, I mean, that that's the thing. And um, it's crazy because like we were saying, there are no coincidences, right? There are no coincidences. There are so many people. And like you said, at the very end, you know, here was somebody that her main, her main hurt is that she doesn't have a husband. She doesn't have a good man in her life. That's her main hurt. And, you know, I read this late before I got, went to bed last night and what you just said, she might think that's so, so small. And so she might not be taking that to the Lord because she thinks, well, that's so small. And, and, and I love that you said there's nothing too big or too small. And, you know, in another instance, because there are no coincidences. Um, and let me tell you what, we got a prayer request right over here from Sherry Lynn and um, her sister, her younger sister is suicidal. So we'll make sure that we, we pray for Sherry's younger sister and Sherry, if you want to give her, give us her name, we'll pray for her at the end. Um, but here's, Interestingly enough, I was out of town la la this past weekend and on Saturday night, you know, we, there's three of us in a room and we're sleeping. We went down to we had sorority sisters get together, you know, roommates. We all lived together. My daughter was with us and about three thirty in the morning. Um, I just I kept hearing. I just kept hearing things. You know, 3.30 in the morning, 3.30 in the morning. And, you know, when you're hearing something and you're like, is this a dream or is this really, is this, is this going on? You know, and, and I was, I, I kept hearing it and I thought, I think people are, I think people are, are just having a good time and they're partying and they're just being loud. And I was about to just go right back in a deep sleep when it was like, God was saying, you know, wake up, wake up. And so I got up completely and even sat up and it was a fight and it was, you know, men, it was a male and a female and it was a fight and it was screaming, it was yelling and you literally could hear, you know, things going on. And, and so I got up and, and then my, you know, my daughter and my friend woke up and we looked out and somebody's jumping off the, the balcony and we've got this going on at, I called the, the front desk and it was, it was a good thing that we called the front desk. You know, the police got called, it was broken up. There was, it was horrible. And one person had to leave in a, in an ambulance, you know, other person was arrested and, you know, pastor Paul, I prayed. I would not, I don't think I would have done this had it not been for what we're doing here with wake up in the word and I prayed for every person. I prayed so hard. I prayed that whatever was going on in their lives that brought them to that anger, that brought them to the place where they were, that those that 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 that, that those binds that Satan is is trying to steal and destroy their lives. I prayed that that God would break those. You know, I prayed that God would be with those people all, you know, I just prayed and I prayed and I prayed. I cannot tell you how much I prayed for these people that I don't know, but that I knew that it wasn't coincidence that God had me at that place 
over the weekend. And it wasn't just to see my friends. I, I, I said, you know, God, there wasn't a coincidence that we were in the room right next to their room. It wasn't a coincidence that God woke me up. It wasn't a coincidence that they, these are people that need healing. And, um, and I don't know who they are, but I will pray and continue to pray for them every day because God wanted me there. And that's God wants us here. There's no coincidence that we're here together. There's no coincidence that the people that are going to watch the replay, watch the replay. There are no coincidences on what we're doing. God needs us. You know, at the very beginning, before we got on the show and I said, Pastor Paul, what's what's laying on your heart? And he said, well, that we're all fighting a fight, but it's not our own fight. It's God's fight. And he doesn't need us fighting one another. He needs us part of the healing team. He needs us praying for one another. He needs us speaking life into one another. You know, he needs us. He's lifting others up. You know, I, I mean, I've got I've got personal things I've got going on in in my life right now. And I'm telling you what what I before and I'm, a, I'm not going to lie before when something would come up, I would say, let me decide how I want to handle this. You know, now I'm saying, let me pray about it. And I was on the couch last night. My husband says, what do you want to do about it? I said, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I need to pray about it. I need to pray about it. I need to pray about it. <laughs> I need to pray about it. And I know as I pray about it, God will place. He's already started to place on my heart what he wants me to do. Not what I want to do. I don't want to do what I want to do. I want to do what God wants me to do. Because, you know, it's just like, the two things that keep ringing in my mind from Stephen Rogers' episode is number one, um, wake up every morning and see the world through God's eyes instead of waking up every morning and seeing God through the world's eyes. Mm-hmm. And the only way we do that is when we wake up with an intent that we go to God first in prayer, we go to God first with his word. That's the only way we can do it. The second thing that just keeps ringing in my ear is that question that Stephen said, you know, how do I know? How do I know when when the spirit is is in me? How do I know when I'm doing God's will? And and he is, you know, his answer was when you have love for all men, when you love everyone and even when there's somebody you don't know. Even when you're praying for people you don't know, even when you concern for people that you don't know, you you know, when when you walk away and I'll I'll tell you that fight that was happening to us uh, next door in the in the room between that man and that woman, um, you know, we had to call twice. And and I, me and my roommate, my ex roommate said, I said, I called the front desk. She said, well, you need to call them again. We have to. We have to be fighting God's fight because we are God's children and he he's fighting for us. He's sending people to us. He's given us the word. Other people are praying on our behalf and we've got to strengthen and fortify ourselves, secure the oxygen mask on ourselves first. If you don't fortify your life through the word, you're not going to be able to to fight. For other people and God needs us. He needs us. Absolutely. Absolutely. So one of one of the scriptures that comes to mind, Colossians 3, verse 1, it says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things on earth. And so when we set our minds, like you're saying, you know, yes, God is our fighter. He is our vindicator. But like you said, we we have to show up. We have to show up for that battle. Goliath didn't fall just because God didn't like him and he was evil. God, God had David come and David went and said, listen, 
who is this undefiled, uh, this, 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 this uncircumcised Philistine who is defiling my God? Who is this guy? How is it that you're, you're sitting here listening to this guy taunt you for 40 days? I'm going to go fight this guy. I don't care what size I am. And so in that same thing that I just said, for the person that was, that was saying, I don't have something good enough or it doesn't, you know, add up. I want you to ask yourself this question. Who are you comparing yourself to? Are you comparing yourself to your last relationship? Are you comparing yourself to your cousin? Are you comparing yourself to what social media or media itself is telling you to compare to? Nine times out of 10, half that beauty is airbrushed. I'm just saying, right? We are, we, God's, God put beauty in you that is, that is far more valuable than what airbrushing can do. God puts something inside of you that no one else can do. And that's where the value is. That's where you begin to understand your worth in Christ Jesus. Because again, if we're trying to find our self-worth out of ourself, then we get inflicted, we get infected with only self. But when we put God in the forefront and say, you know what? I am a child of God. I have accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I am his child. I am his child. I am covered by the blood. I am more than a conqueror. I overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. This is who I am. Jesus Christ says it this way. The weapons of of my warfare are not carnal. All of these things, the all of the stuff, the narrative that we have within ourselves, we have to come to understand, who am I comparing myself to? God doesn't want you to compare. God doesn't want you to keep up with the Joneses. It's not our job to do that. God is saying, listen, this is the life that I have set for you. So many times we get caught up in the whole thing of, well, you know what? If you do this, God's going to bless you with this you know, 3,000 square foot house, right? You can't take care of the 500 uh, uh, square foot apartment that you have. So unless you take care of that, you can't take care of this. And that part of the gospel has to be, has to be really truly balanced because not everyone is going to live in trophy club. Not everyone is going to live in East Dallas. Not everyone's going to live in Atlanta. Not everyone's going to live in a certain place or do a certain thing. The problem is, is that Paul says it this way. I know what it is to have a lot. And I know what it is to be in chains. I'm content wherever God has me. And this is where God is speaking to his people this season. It's not about being broke. Please trust me. I'm not saying go out there and just be broke, busted, disgusted, give your money to every. No, 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 no. You still have to take care of your home front, but be content with where God has placed you. Be content and look at your situation and go, OK, God, I may be at this job. I may even be in this relationship. It just ain't the best that I see it to be. Now, if you're being abused and someone's emotionally and, and mentally tearing you down, it's time for you to, to either reconcile that and you both go to counseling, you make this thing happen, right? I'm not promoting divorce. I'm not uh, promoting separation, but there are times where you have to separate. You have to be able to say, all right, what's, what's important here? I'm tired of being abused. I'm tired of waking up with black and blue eyes. That's not God. That's not God. That's not submission. That's bondage, right? So in that same thing, we have to understand that our relationships that we're in, our workplaces that we're in, our all of the stuff that we're in in life because we're human, there's a, there's a purpose. Don't let your season be wasted. Learn something from it and say, all right, God, you've got me at this job for this season for a reason. What am I supposed to learn here? Who am I supposed to minister to? Who am I supposed to walk up and just say, hey, do you need prayer? How's your day going? You doing all right? And you'll have some people just open up to you, right? So here's the clue. Here's the truth. Going back to Matthew 6, 19 through 34. I've been stuck on that for three or four weeks now. What is your devotion? What is your focus? 
and who is fighting for me? Exodus 14, 14. So I know we're running out of time. So Jens, if you have any final thoughts, let's do it. Oh yeah. You know, a couple things. One that you said, and I love is our identity is internal, not external. Our identity is not what you do or what you have. Your identity is who you are and you're a child of God. Come on. That's our identity. And, and that's one thing I see people get tripped up on a lot is they're looking externally for their identity. That's what Satan wants you to do. That's why people don't feel like they're enough and they don't feel like they're, you know, they're, they're trying to keep up with the Jones Joneses. You are not what you have and you never will be. You will never be what you have or what you don't have. Okay. Come on. That is not who you are. You know, this, this earthly life is just a season and it's the season where we prepare to meet God. It's this season where we are, where we're, we're, you know, when we leave this earth, we're leaving this earth with the attributes and the lessons and the knowledge and the experience and the wisdom that we, that we gathered here on this earth. That's how we are. That those are the treasures that we're going to have in heaven. And, you know, the, the last thing is focus on positivity, man, focus on positivity. You got to focus on the positivity and we can't strengthen anyone when we're not strong ourselves. So, you know, here we are, there's no coincidence. We're together. Uh, we love you. We know God loves you. The, what, the reason Pastor Paul and I do what we do is because God has placed us on our heart to, to pull together as many people that are at a place in their life where number one, you need to be healed. You want to be healed. You're just discovering all of this. Maybe you're rediscovering it. Remember, God stays consistent. He's right here. Maybe you take you took a detour. You're off the highway. You want to get back on. You don't know how, you know, um, or you're at a place where you are more. You're stronger and you want to help. You want to be a part of the solution. You know, like Biggie said, hey, look, if you're if we're not going to be part of the solution, we can't complain. And if you are being a part of the solution, you're not complaining. You're doing you're doing what uh, what Mark said. True love. First John three eighteen. First John three eighteen. True love demands action. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. That means once we are fortified and strengthened, once we are a disciple of Christ, we're not just going to talk about the word. We're not going to just read the word, but we're going to be a disciple and we are going to be out and about spreading good tidings, helping heal other people. And through our word and deeds, listening on how we can uplift people God does not want one of his children to be pulled down by Satan. That is not what he wants. So we got to help one another. So I, I love it. You know, we're going to be here tomorrow and we're going to be here all week long, 630 a.m. Please share this out. Please share the, the broadcast, you know, not just on your Facebook pages, but individually through messenger to people that, you know, might need this. So we're going to close in prayer and then we're going to send you off to have an amazing day. Our Father, we are so grateful for all of the blessings that you give us. Father, we know this community is a gift. We know that everything that you are doing in our lives is, is for a, a purpose that is in you and that we've got to turn to you, Father. We pray for those people that are watching live. We pray for all those that watch um, on replay. We pray for all those people, Father, that that was placed in our lives that we need to, that we need to help and to strengthen and to fortify. Father, we pray for Sherry's sister who is, is in a place right now that Satan has a, a hold of her. We pray, Father, that those, those, 
those chains that Satan has around her, we pray, Father, that they will break, that they will they will be loosened and that she will have a desire to turn to, to you, that she will feel the immense love that you have for her, Father. We pray for every person that is struggling right now, that if we're if we're a part of anyone that's struggling right now, we pray, Father, that those people will be placed on our hearts, on our minds. We pray, Father, that when we're praying individually and collectively, that we will be praying, Father, that you strengthen us and that you keep us um, just single focused on you and that that you help us to be able to know what you need us to do, Father. We pray that we will have happiness in this life, that we pray that we will have be content. We pray, Father, that we will seek love because we know that you are the answer always. You are the answer always. Help us, Father, to do good, to be good, and to bring glad tidings and help heal this world. And we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll see you tomorrow, 6.30 a.m. Wake up in the Word. Bye-bye.